question that we constantly get is, is this PSP2? And the reality is when we started concepting for Vita, it was never designed to be PSP2. We always looked at it as something so much greater. So early on, we were able to feel emotionally invested in this hardware. The earliest form of Vita was really interesting because in my 20 some years of, of game development, never had the experience of getting to work with the hardware manufacturers. One of the great things that Shu Yoshida brings as president of Worldwide Studios is this relationship with SEI. And so he has influenced them to include all of Worldwide Studios heavily in the early hardware development. And in my experience, and I've been here a long time, I haven't seen something like this where everybody had a voice. You know, the engineers were asking for all sorts of uh, input from the game developers on, you know, what, what about, you know, what kind of analog sticks, you know, should the button be concave or the, the stick or, you know, convex. And that includes, you know, our internal studios, included third parties. Like, we brought in everybody. The further we got into production, I'm like, wow, uh, this, this thing's uh, this thing's a beast. When you can touch essentially a box and a pile of wires and tell those engineers what you think, it makes a huge difference as opposed to some guys handing you a machine when it's all done and saying, do your best. But we did look at a really broad range of things and then when we looked at the final product, we wanted it to be something that was so markedly different than where mobile is that we stopped talking about mobile and portable devices. We kind of leave that in the past. This is really kind of superseding the market in entertainment experiences. But where this thing really started to shine was when you had that big five inch high def screen in front of you, right? Then you realized, okay. Our partners AT&T and got a, a, just a dump of wealth of learnings from them on um, you know, touch devices that they previously have worked on and to really understand what the consumer wants when they have a touch panel. We're blown away by the beauty of the OLED screen. I mean, it's absolutely a gorgeous experience. And what it does is it's probably the closest to a PS3 visual experience that you're gonna ever be able to find on any handheld. First time we, we saw the screen, it was like, Wow, it's so vibrant. Green is just a gorgeous OLED screen, and um, it's just fun to look at anything on that screen. But the size of the screen, it's, it's really big enough to immerse you in the game, whereas you can't get that with you know a phone or something like that, so it really kind of is big enough to cross that boundary from I'm immersed in the game to I'm just you know tapping on something. Ergonomically, it, it's just more comfortable to hold something where you're not. It, it's nice to have something that's a little more substantial to hold on to. Your hands aren't compressed, you, you don't have cramps, it just it, it feels good. Uh, and the weight of it, it, it's not too heavy, it's not too light. Um, so it just felt comfortable. So, you know, we're really comfortable and we're really back going to the bigger screen because when you look at the um, performance of Vita, you know, powerful CPU and in particular GPU, we can really push things and to get the best out of it, you need a beautiful screen like that. You know, so the developers are super excited about what we're seeing on the screen. The simple little thrill of, hey, I gotta get this guy from point A to point B and how do I do it? Oh, there's some things I can interact with from behind my game machine, push them out towards me. The creation of all creation, being able to rise mountains with, with your fingertips. Every single gamer and producer in our whole organization just screamed and stomped their feet and said, two sticks, two sticks, until we got it, right? Yeah, I mean, the dual analog sticks, especially for a first person shooter, are huge. I mean, you can't, you can't overstate it. From the very beginning, this was designed as a first-person shooter-esque platform. The dual analogs, the big screen, is really, it's a games player's machine. The perfect decision for a handheld, really. I mean, who doesn't want to play Uncharted or Call of Duty on a handheld? I mean, I want to sit there and just play away with it. That you get to play you know, incredible games on it. You know, dual analog sticks for a racing game, especially ours, um, it, it's almost, we don't stunt anybody's growth. And so for us, it then now becomes this great experience where there's a lot of muscle memory. You know, the, the desire for the traditional game buttons that, you know, make our games what they are. It hasn't really been done until Vita. I think the Wi-Fi 3G component um, allows us to do something that we, we haven't taken full advantage of before. Things like the near functionality on Vita, to be able to drop a, a digital gift, and if anyone else comes through that same general area with a Vita and they're looking for gifts via near, like, hey, 
someone that was playing Mod Nation Racers or Uncharted dropped a digital gift. You always have a connection to what's going on with other people that are playing. And it just kind of reminds you that the game is there. You know, you can see your friend just started playing a match and you can like, okay, I'm gonna go and jump into that match. But it's also a good tool for socialization. So when you see that people have downloaded your creations, okay, well that's exciting and it can help foster the community. It, it, it just helps that communication and collaboration. Achievements that are based on individual locations that rewards you with assets that then you can share with your friends kind of on this in this endless cycle of, of goodness. We have some unannounced titles as yet that are really pushing location-based experiences and um, you know really will bring through um, the, the beauty of taking your Vita out with you to play. We're fortunate at PlayStation to have such robust kind of technologically advanced products to be able to talk. Stop playing at home and pick up and resume on the road. And there really is nothing else in the industry, really anything else in gaming, that has had a portable device and a console device really actually talk seamlessly. And so now, all that time that you're away from your PS3, you can always be accumulating trophies. I think that's huge. Again, the thing is so packed with so many different features, there's almost nothing that didn't make it in. You know, really, it, it, it is kind of a do-everything device. It makes all the sense in the world, and it's all about the game.